What's up, freaks? This rip was brought to you by River. River's a Bitcoin company built by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners the right way. There's no trusted third parties. They build all their infrastructure. They have free DCA because they know it's the best way to buy Bitcoin. So if you want to buy Bitcoin, you want to mine Bitcoin, you want to send Bitcoin over the Lightning Network, you want to plug into their Lightning Network API. If you're a developer, they're building all these tools for you. They also encourage self-custody. Again, they're Bitcoiners. They want to provide an on-ramp for you and then teach you and encourage you to take control of your own Bitcoin. And they're doing this. It's a beautiful company. If you do hold Bitcoin on the exchange, you can know for sure, since they don't rely on any third parties, they don't lend your Bitcoin out, they don't speculate with your Bitcoin, your Bitcoin is held in a multi-sig wallet with 100% reserves. Okay, so go to river.com slash TFTC, take advantage of the no fee DCA, you set up your dollar cost average, you don't pay any fees on those buys. If you're a developer, they have their Lightning Network Services API that you can build on, you can send over Lightning, you can mine via river as well uh, you may have your exchange you may be comfortable with it but if you have you tried river yet it's a question you have to ask yourself if the answer is no go try it that's where all the bitcoiners are hanging out that's where i get my bitcoin as well river.com slash tftc thank you guys for listening if you're listening on youtube please subscribe set the notifications up as well we're going to be putting out a lot of content this year uh, if you want to Subscribe to the podcast feed as well. If you're not around your computer or not listening on YouTube, but you want to catch the podcast on the podcasting feeds, subscribe on your favorite podcasting app. And if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, I write a, a newsletter almost daily during the week. Go to tftc.io, subscribe on the website, and you'll get pure signal on Bitcoin, macroeconomics, geopolitics, whatever tickles my fancy that day. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for supporting the show. If you can subscribe, rate, review, it goes a long way. We're trying to blow this up in 2023. Enjoy the rip. You've had a dynamic where money's become freer than free. If you talk about a Fed just gone nuts, all, all the central banks going nuts. So it's all acting like safe haven. I believe that in a world where central bankers are tripping over themselves to devalue their currency, Bitcoin wins. In the world of fiat currencies, Bitcoin is the victor. I mean, that's part of the bull case for Bitcoin. If you're not paying attention, you probably should be. Probably should be. Probably should be. Probably should be. Oh, we're live. We're live. We're Rick V, not Ricky. Rick V from Crypto Cloaks. <laughs> We're 50 blocks away from a palindrome block here at block height 771,127. And we're here to talk about 3D printing and crypto cloaks. Rick V, welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good morning. Thanks for having me, finally. Thanks for coming. Thank you for doing it in the morning. This is a 9 a.m. rip where I am, 8 a.m. rip where you are. Coffee rip. Yeah. Coffee rip. They're the best. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to start the week off like this. Obviously, Matt and I were talking about drooling into the... <laughs> The uh, what was that an S nine enclosure that you turned? Yeah, that, yeah, that was hilarious. I was like, "You guys, come on now!" You got kids; they drool. I know. I hear it. I hear it. That's why we created a different one. There's like a solid top now that it blows the heat to the sides. You can still technically drool in the side if you really want to, but yeah, I can imagine the kid lean. The kid's gonna lean on it, push it over, and then start drooling on it. And these kids get <laughs> yeah. creative with with where they put their drool. Yeah, man, you're gonna be screwed either way with kids, so. <laughs> well, before we get into the space heater, which is extremely cool, like I was telling you before we hit record, like I'm pretty ignorant to 3D printing. I mean, I've been aware that it's been this growing trend, and I've seen everything that you guys have been building at Crypto Cloaks over the years. We actually have one of the grenades. Oh, there we go. There yeah. we go, baby. We have a, a Crypto Cloaks Bitcoin grenade here. Um, what the hell is this? Like, what, like, how cheap? It's just is like a, it's a piece of art, man. That's all it is now. It's crazy how far that thing has come. We literally built that and designed it for a conference in uh, Vietnam. I think four <laughs> years ago now. 
Was that Eric Vosco's like, conference? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, in Hanoi, right? It was right yeah, before Hanoi. COVID. Yeah, it was right before COVID. And he had me send out like 120 to the conference. And then nobody showed up because of COVID. And so he had like 80 left. And he just started giving them out randomly. But that's where it all started from. And so, but CryptoClux is much older than that. Like, let's. Yeah. We're on like year six. What what drove you to start CryptoClux and before even CryptoClux, like what got you into 3D printing? Yeah, uh, I got into 3D printing from senior design in college. So we had a senior project where four of us each kind of had a machine to mess with. Somebody did CNC. I was in charge of running the 3D printer. And then other people did, I don't even know, laser engraver and one other machine. And that's kind of where I fell in love with it and started learning on it eventually, like right away. And so how would you describe 3D printing, where it is now, and where it was when you were in college taking that class? Because it seems like there's been a lot of advancements. Uh, it's crazy how fast the space moves. I'm not going to lie. I just got a new printer and it's blowing all the ones that I've had out of the water just based on speed alone and quality. I think the technology is going super fast. Yeah. And so what is the technology? How how does this all work? So I guess the big thing right now is they're starting like this bamboo carbon has LIDAR on it. So it can actually scan your um, filament passes and then t uh, change the settings of the printer based on that on like flow. So that way it can optimize how fast it can print and not look like crap. Yeah, because back in the old days, you would like 3D print something. And you had to like shave stuff off. Yeah, like way olden days. And even when I first started, there was an auto bed leveling. So you had to do it all manually where you had four knobs on either side of the bed and you're kind of trying to get the perfect squish from all four corners and with a piece of paper, tug it underneath the nozzle. And now even all these Prusas that we run in the shop, they have auto bed leveling that does all that automatically. for you. And so what does that mean for the time in a which lot. it takes to, to print this stuff? So I would say when I first started, a simple little maybe ledger nano mount would maybe be five hours to print, and I can print them in 20 minutes or less now. Holy shit. No, it's crazy. It's, it's like really, really crazy. So that's one fifteenth of the time. Yeah. That would have taken before. So that's a crazy yeah, this printer's event. insanely fast. I posted a couple videos on Twitter. And I was even mind blown when I first got it. Like, I didn't believe all the stuff I saw. And then I put it in ludicrous mode, which is one of the speeds. And I was like, holy shit, this thing's insane. So what is, what are the implications of 3D printing on, I mean, obviously you're building stuff particular to Bitcoiners. You mentioned the Ledger Nano mounts. Yep. You guys have a cold card mount, Bitfoddle. Um, you guys are building all these mining tools as well. Like how... Do you see 3D printing disrupting everyday business manufacturing particularly? I would see 3D printing is huge right now in like rapid prototyping because it kind of destroys the whole getting a CNC mold of everything to really prototype parts and stuff. And now you can easily just design it, make a quick change, whip it up on a printer, see if it works, and then go to the molding process. So you're not spending tens of thousands of dollars making new molds and all this stuff. You can just rapid prototype it with plastic make sure it all works and then get your final mold. Yeah. So what's the CNC or is that what yeah, it's called? CNC. CNC. Yeah. So what's that process? So you're like? pretty much, you're pretty much getting a block of aluminum and then they CNC out the parts to make a mold, an inverse mold of that part. And then they pour resin liquid into it. And then that's how you get your part. And we're 3d printing. It just builds it up as a layer and you don't have to use huge chunks of aluminum to make your molds out of. And so this, rapidly changes the cost to do research and development. Oh, absolutely. And that's why you see all these companies, like even spaceship companies making parts out of 3D printers for spaceships and stuff now. Like yeah, the was, technology is so crazy. I can't even believe it half the time. Yeah, I was listening to the All In podcast over the weekend and Chamath was mentioning one of SpaceX's uh, main competitors is about to do a launch, I believe later this month or next month. And all their parts are 3D printed. Yeah, it's next level shit. And their printers are all metal, which are sweet. I can't afford one. They're super expensive, but <laughs> well, maybe that's a good in the future. Maybe that's a good segue. Like, so what are the different types of printers out there? Obviously, 3D printing guns has become a big 
uh, sub theme yeah. in the Bitcoin space and the sovereignty space? Like, what are, what are what's the range and the spectrum of? Yeah, I would say. I'd say your two main types are going to be kind of like FDM, which is a spool of plastic melts through a hot end to print your part. And then resin would be the other one, which I think is a huge pain in the ass. It makes beautiful parts, but the post-processing sucks. Uh, It's pretty much a vat of liquid resin. And then it has a laser that pretty much solidifies that resin at each layer as it goes up. And that's how you get your part. So those are the two main 3D printing techniques out there. And then what is... uh... What's the ghost gunner using that? Because that has to shave down metal, correct? Um, or no, they yeah, use what plastic. Is that? Yeah, so like if you're printing lowers, you can print that in PLA plus PETG. Uh, that's just your regular regular FDM printer. You can print those on any of those back there. Um, the ghost gunner, I think, is I believe they're actually milling that out. I think you put like a what is it, a one eighth lower or whatever the heck they're called into there, and then it just mills out the last little bits to make it a lower. Yeah. And how much, how much are these printers costing these days? So that's a crazy thing too. When I first got into it, some of these printers were, I would say Prusa was really expensive and they actually kept cost really good. Um, it can range from like a hundred dollars, which is like your classic Ender three. If you want to get into the hobby and learn to, I don't know if you want to get a metal printer, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it really depends. Yeah. And then how much for the materials that go into the printer? Um, for PLA, you can get it for 25 bucks a roll and that's like one kilogram and it can last you a long time if you don't print 24 seven, like I do. Um, and then resin, it all depends. Like, uh, let's see, I can point oops wrong way. This one, that's a resin printer. That's the form three. That is like two, no, 150 bucks for a thousand milliliters of resin. So that one's actually really expensive to print in. It's also closed source. So you have to like technically buy their resin, but the resin works flawlessly with their printer, so I just do it. Yeah. And so how much stuff can you produce with $250 worth of resin? Uh, oh, God, probably, let's see. I'm trying to think of the last time I've done that. You could maybe do, let's, let's think in lower standards. Uh, you could maybe print like three or four lowers, I would think. Okay. But you know, I wouldn't print them in resin. I don't see anybody printing them really in resin. I would, I wouldn't trust that. No. I think they're more brittle than PETG and PLA plus. Yeah. And so obviously you've built crypto cloaks over the last six, seven years. You see an opportunity here using 3D printing to bring products to Bitcoiners, whether it may be art like this grenade or um, functional products like the the fan ducts you can put on your miners the space heater that you can create for it's just an s9 right now correct yeah just an s9 right now yep um but in, like the the range of of products that you can build using these 3d printers is pretty incredible what what opportunity do you see is this just the beginning of crypto cloaks obviously not just the beginning of six <laughs> years in but you know what 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 kind of opportunity are you seeing for you guys i mean there's the mining the whole home mining thing is a whole nother level like we were just building cases for bitcoin nodes and fun art things and now the whole home mining space is a whole nother ball game and i really love it like i think that's why i've put a lot of time and stuff into home mining because i just fell in love with it myself yeah and what i mean obviously you have the space heater you have the fan ducts what can you guys build that that makes it easier for a home miner to do what they're trying to do, whether it be to heat their house or simply just run some ASICs in their basement? Yeah, I would say the fan shrouds alone are really helpful just because you can easily put it into a six or eight inch duct and then you just run that right into your uh, furnace. Um, I know people don't even need the like duct work. They just pretty much put the shroud on and then put it right in the side, like cut a hole in the side of their furnace. They're just direct heat that way. I think that's one of our biggest products right now on just helping the home mining space is shrouds because it's just an easy way to screw it onto your miner, put a duck on, and then you can duck the heat wherever you want in your house, outside, very easily. What's the design process for that? Like, Do you have to t- do a LiDAR of the whole ASIC or you simply do some measurements around where the fan is and then yeah, design yeah, it's- from there? Pretty easy. I So I do have a full model that I designed up of the S19 just to go off of. Uh, that was for fun and modeling. Um, but usually it's just getting a caliper and taking all the individual measurements 
and then just drawing it up in CAD and figuring out what you want to do. Yeah. What uh beyond like the the fans that connect to the ducts and the space heater? What else do you think that we can do with these these ASICs that that hasn't been touched yet? I'd really like to do like home heating on like water. So I want to. This really wouldn't be three D printing. It's more. I want to do how GPU blocks have the water cooling blocks, and then you can pretty much run that heat through a radiator. I want to do that for uh, Bitcoin ASIC boards. So I want to just do a big water block on an ASIC board, and that way you can use even GPU radiators to cool this stuff. And then you can take that heated water and do whatever you want with it. I think so that's the future from moving forward a little bit. So are you thinking like deconstruct the ASIC, just take the hash boards out and run those? Yeah, run those. Uh, maybe, and then pretty much take off all the heat sinks and then put on these separate uh, water boards just to keep the chips cool. And then you have all this heat that you can do just like the graphics cards on computers. Yeah. And I, I don't know if anybody's working on it, but I've always wanted to do that. So no, when you think about decentralizing and distributing ownership of hash rates, products like these that are going to make it more possible, more viable. Cause you think of the economics of it and just simply plugging an ASIC in at your house and running it is going to eat up a lot of your electricity bill, probably not make yeah. a lot of money. So you want to make sure that, it's doing these ancillary things like heating your house, heating your water, whatever it may be. And that really makes the economics palpable. I, yeah, for the winter, I mean, having a little space heater, like I said, why I did it in the first place is my wife would run a 1500 watt space heater at night. And I'm like, what the, what the hell are we doing? We're just burning money for nothing. I have S9s downstairs. If I can make it quiet, run it in the room and run it at like 650 watts and still heat the room, why, why don't we do that? I might as well mine Bitcoin instead of just burning money <laughs> on a 1500 watt space heater. And so how, how long did it take you to design and get to the final product of that space heater? I think pro I just finished up technically cause I had to make a couple of changes to the box messing with printers and stuff. So probably three to four weeks from <laughs> really? to finish. Yeah, it was fun. I, I was really in it. So I put a lot of time, even like all my spare time I was putting into it. And just, I really wanted to get it to run because I didn't want to burn a space heater in my room anymore. I was like, screw this. I'm going to get this miner to run quiet. So, and so what does that look like in the design? How's this box design? What's it connecting to? How's it, how's it making it quiet? Okay. So the first thing was we tested a, a whole, or I guess I tested a whole bunch of different fans. Um, the stock fans are loud as hell, even if you bring it down. Um, the main PSU fan on the S nines are the loudest thing if you run a low wattage. So swapping that out was the biggest game changer. And I've made a note of that in that whole, uh, write up I did is if you're run, going to run a low wattage, you might as well just change this and see if you even need to change stock fans. Um, after that, I just swapped to Noctua's cause they're usually generally very quiet on gaming PCs. So I tested a whole variety of those. And then I like the one forties on there because I could run them at about 50% fan speed and I was getting like 40 decibels on it at like 650 watts and that was perfect for my setup. Now everybody's going to, everybody's setup is going to change. That's why the guide is kind of like a, a good look to or how to do it and then fine tune it from there based on everybody's different uh, situations. Yeah. And what, what are your thoughts in regards to like the longevity of this, the, What's the word I'm looking for? This like particular setup that you have swapping out fans, PSUs. Like, are you confident that that will be able to run efficiently for a long period of time? Yeah, I do. I mean, I won't have it. I love taking data and like testing stuff out. So I'll, I just keep running this thing and just to get all those final points and tell people, but I don't see any issue with it. You're running lower Watts. It's not overheating. I think I have my chips set at a, a temp of 80 C, uh, and then during the winter, obviously you're not going to run it during the summer. This, this whole thing is just for winter to heat your house. If you're going to burn a space heater, why not run a Bitcoin miner instead? And that was the whole premise. It's not, oh, I want to run this 24 um, seven. Or if you have other ways that are more efficient of heating, then yeah, do those. But this is for the people that run space heaters that are just burning electricity. You might as well mine Bitcoin. Yeah. And if you, what are the numbers looking like comparing the, the Bitcoin space heater to the the fiat space heater that was eating up 1500 watts. Yeah. So I run it 
I pretty much run that miner now uh, 24 seven. I don't ever turn it off and it keeps that room at like 70 degrees Fahrenheit now. Um, so I'm running almost the same Watts cause I used to run that for like 10 to 12 hours, but now I'm running this one a hundred percent of the time. And now I can unplug it and plug it in every night, but I don't know. I might as well just run it. It's almost the same wattage. So I just run it now 24 seven and keep that room at 70 degrees throughout the entire day. Is it profitable or is you simply paying less for electricity? I would say I'm just simply getting rid of the electricity cost. I'm already burning the electricity cost. I might as well try to get some sats out of it. So I would de I'm definitely gaining money. I mean, any sats that I get from it are a bonus compared to what I was burning and not getting. Money. Hell yeah. And then how does it work? I mean, you mentioned you run it at 80 degrees Celsius. What, yep. what are the, like the temperature limits of the materials? Uh, okay. So yeah, yeah. Uh, for PLA, it's it's right on the line of if you were running that thing at like 90 C, you could you could kind of tell that you might be hitting the limit on PLA where it's going to start warping over time. And that's why the final ones that I'm printing out are in PETG because it can ha withstand all those higher temps. And I just wanted to make sure that if people are buying it, they're not it's not warping and melting into the miner or anything like that over time. Because if you let your miner get up to 90, 95 C, it doesn't shut off and cool. You're going to start melting PLA. Yeah. And PTG, how, how high can that was? Uh, God, I've had, I think we've tested in one of the smaller mining groups and we've been, it never even warped at 95, 98 C. So that's good. I mean, you don't want ever want to run a miner any hotter than that anyways. So if we yeah, can take those temps, yeah, you'll burn out the hash boards. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fascinating. And so what do you like? In terms of like the water cooling, the space heater, what do you think this does for the potential of, of hash rate distribution in the long term? I think, it, I think it helps tremendously. You get rid of, if every household could run it even an S9 or even a what's minor, a smaller one, I think you're going to distribute way more than where it is now. Because you, ha you have more, so what am I looking for? Um, there's a reason to run a miner instead of just mining Bitcoin. It actually gives you a benefit instead of just, oh, I want to mine Bitcoin. Well, now you can use that heat. And I think that'll hit normies more and get them more interested if they can actually do something with the miner or gain more benefit than just Bitcoin if they can't see how important Bitcoin is. Yeah. Have you thought about going to like HVAC companies and being like, hey, let's work together. Let me design. I think it would be cool. I, that'll definitely be something in the future. I just want to try to get this thing came out of nowhere because I just tested the box i built the box for fun just to hold the miner in in the room while during testing and then everybody kind of wanted one and i was like oh shit, okay and then they wanted like built all in one units where it's plug and play and i was like oh that's that's a lot more than what i even wanted to do in the first place i just wanted to test and write up a guide so everybody could do it for themselves so if i get the s9 as a plug and play unit i would love to go to hvac companies and start doing different things there. Cause I think that's a huge market. Yeah. When you think of like the players that are going to help distribute the ownership of hash rate, I think a HVAC companies are actually going to play a big role, especially if ASICs become an integral part of heating systems. Yeah. And whether it be, I mean, I'm sure you saw the example of that hotel. I forget exactly where it was. I think it was in Europe where they were heating their rooms with a6 freaking nuts yeah that's so cool i love that <laughs> right? like if you could get like a plug and play like in the commercial space or even like the home space like a furnace or something like that i would love that that'd be nuts that would i mean not only would i love it i think we should be pushing for it because i mean 100 no, the last two weeks were a perfect example of oh actually maybe centralized down here in texas to 30 uh, percent of <laughs> network hash rate coming offline due to demand response systems because yeah, we got to blast we got to spread that out a little bit more yeah you know what are your what are your like crypto cloaks is six years old so obviously you had this uh you were enamored with 3d printing you wanted to make a business out of it and you decided to make a 3d printing business revolving around bitcoin bitcoin products yep. bitcoin art so obviously you were a Bitcoiner at the time too. You've been around, yeah, for six I've been years around at least. for a long time now. Yeah. It doesn't feel like any time at all. What uh, what got you into Bitcoin? 
Man, it was it came down to one of my buddies showed me some other cryptocurrency. I have the story of where I started out shit coining and then you like lose some money and you're like, well, fuck this. <laughs> and then you go down that rabbit hole. But one of my buddies showed me some cryptocurrency. I couldn't even remember what it was. And then I started going down the rabbit hole and then you go down and learn all about the banks. And then I don't know, you just, it's a typical rabbit hole story. And then you're just like, what the fuck are we doing with the money? And then from there, I'm just like, well, I don't want the government to have any more control. And then you kind of, you take that orange pill and then it spreads out to your whole entire life. And six years later, you're like a hardcore Bitcoiner and just want to fix the money and fix the world. Like, it's crazy. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is crazy how how it hooks you if it does. You... Yeah, my wife was initially now she's completely like orange pilled, too. And she's like red pilled when she didn't even want to deal with like politics and all that other crap. And now she's just like, no, fuck the government. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how long have you guys been married? We've been married for five years now, so oh, very similar, yeah. similar trajectories here. Uh, yeah. we, have, we have our six-year anniversary this year. Nice, same here. Just crazy to think, um, right? Yeah, and um, so you guys open source your designs too, right? We try to do as many as possible. So okay. some we just keep closed because we need to gain rev money. It's a business. I can't just open up everything. I could but I want some money coming in so then I can keep prototyping and bringing out more designs to the file factory. But I really try to put out as many of the home mining designs that we do onto the file factory. Now the space heater is not out there yet because I'm trying to raise funds for a bigger printer with selling those. And then eventually I'll put that on the file factory too, where anybody can print their own S9 box. Yeah. So what are, what are the economics of running a 3d printing business? It's profitable. It's Oh yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, you're, it all depends on what your margins want to be. Uh, you just choose. Um, I try to make sure that, I don't know how, like plastic's cheap, but it's more your time and the print time itself. Because everybody says, oh, plastic's cheap, why are you charging so much? Well, yeah, the plastic's cheap, but sometimes the prints take 15, 20 hours. Well, you have to, you have to put that time in and then it's all like the design time in itself. So over the last six years, you kind of learn like where you want to put your numbers at. You can definitely make money, but during bear markets, you definitely feel it because the Bitcoin space in general, nobody wants to spend Bitcoin when it's down like 80%. But if you don't go in shit coins, you're fine. You can withstand bear markets. This yeah. isn't our first one. Yeah. And how do you see this market developing? You see a 3D printer in every house. Do you see specialized companies like crypto cloaks sort of being these hubs where hey we'll do all the design work we have the printers we'll produce everything a mixture of both um yeah i i honestly would love everybody to have a printer in their house i think it's a whole self-sovereignty tool like another level kind of like how bitcoin is with money here it is where you can do whatever you want if you if you want to there's millions of files online you can print whatever you want and then have it uh the whole gun movement on 3d printing guns i think is really important when the government tries to take your guns away if everybody has a printer well they technically can't yeah it's a it's a freedom tool like bitcoin and i think everybody should have one in their house that's what that's why i try to like show off 3d printing and what it's all about to try to get more and more people interested and i think i'm doing a pretty good job i know a lot of people reach out and say hey i'm buying my first printer and i'm like hell yes every bitcoiner should have a 3d what can you like, so let's try and paint the picture of what's possible with these printers. So if you yeah. buy your own printer at home, like what are the types of things that you could, you could build that would really bring yeah, so value? Yeah. So you can always, us. yeah, you can always do like knickknacks and stuff, toys for kids and stuff. Uh, the big thing is like if something, if a part breaks around your house and they don't manufacture that part, you can design it up yourself. Yes. If you don't have design experience, it'll take a long time but you can design it yourself and 3D print that part and now you have a replacement. Um, the big, uh, a story I always use is all those little Christmas light hooks that stores have so you can hang your lights on gutters. Well, every store I went to was out of them. So I just whipped up a design real quick and installed them on my, all my gutters myself and now I, now I have Christmas light hooks. And I, I couldn't find them in any store so I just printed my own. Uh, that's just like a really simple thing that you can do, but it just starts there. 
Was it would it was it cheaper than what it would have been if you were? Able oh, to absolutely. Because I was printing hooks at maybe a penny to two pennies a pop, where you're buying like, I don't know, twenty for like six bucks or something like that. So yeah, you're even saving money there. But I just wanted hooks. I don't even care about that. I just wanted to be able to have hooks. So. <laughs> no, and it's no, it is fascinating. Is that we had to replace a part in our washer recently, and I'm wondering like, what if we could just design up a spec print that out and anything's run. possible it just depends on how much time you also want to put into it because like if the part is pretty complex you can spend a lot of time trying to prototype and print this part instead of spending like 12 bucks and buying it online if they still make it yeah no that's crazy because i mean when it comes to like asics too you're not necessarily printing replacement parts you're printing enhancement parts which is a whole other thing. So you could look at everything you have in your house, whether it be an ASIC or a washing machine. Maybe you want it to, or your dryer, you want it to put the heat from there yeah. somewhere. Like you could build these parts to do that. That's so, a cool part. Because even like if you buy a cheap 3D printer, let's say $100, the first thing you do is 3D print upgrades for it to make it a three to $400 printer. Wait, what? That's the, that's the best part. Like when I first bought my Maker Select V2, it was a $150 printer, but then I immediately had a list. Uh, I followed a guide, a list of all these parts to upgrade your printer, like making it more stable, uh, bigger knobs and upgrades for it. And then it was like a three to $400 printer, but you printed all the parts yourself. Four pennies on the dollar. Yeah. And that's like the cool part is you can always upgrade these printers with the printer. Now this is getting heady because you think... <laughs> Because this thing can just evolve yeah. on itself. Like, it's People just are always like, why don't you just print your own printers? It's like, you can, but you also need like metal rods and stuff. Because all the Perusa printers, all those plastic parts they use are open source. So you technically can print all those parts. But then you just have to buy the motors and the rods and stuff like that. Yeah. So where is this going? Like, it's it's advanced. I mean, you, <laughs> you mentioned like the time to print is one fifteenth yeah. of what it was six years ago. Like, what are you seeing on your end in terms of the trends in the 3d printing space? And like, are there, well, more... I hate, I hate how they're 3d printing meat. I think that's just disgusting. Yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> the fucking 3d printing food. Uh, I think it's cool where you can like, they're building houses with 3d printers. I think that's, that's an insane technology. I don't know how valuable it is. I don't know. I, I haven't really went down it. I just think it's really cool as a 3d printer that we're 3d printing houses. Like that's nuts to me. Yeah. You ever see those? Yeah, yeah. They're like cement. It's like, yeah, like going it's around. nuts. Is that a cheap house though? See, that's what I, that's what I, it's like. Oh, is that just like a fiat house because it's <laughs> shittily made of, with a 3D printer? Or is that actually cool because it's beneficial? I don't yeah. know. And do you think the materials that you'll be able to use to 3D print will get more durable, more high Oh, absolutely. End? Yeah, because they're always coming out with new filaments and higher tolerances and stuff like that. I mean, they have the metal printers. They use almost uh, a box full of, like, dust, and then they weld it together as it goes. It's crazy. Yeah. And so we're, we're like, the, I mean, obviously we talked about rocket ships, but what other types of products are these metal 3D printers? I know the car industries are using them. Uh, for like prototype parts or trying to make super light like luxury car parts i think i think i read something about like bugatti printing a part or i don't know ferrari or something like that but there's all these like customizable parts that make it lighter if you 3d print it and it's almost stronger that's insane and you can create these new designs and sort of yeah. customize on the go yeah. so what does One it do for like aesthetics so that's the cool part is you can design all these badass looking things really easily that you maybe couldn't or would take forever all the other ways. Like they're coming out with different 3D programs right now with printers that you can literally just print in midair because it's using just circular print motion. So it's not technically going straight out right away to print over the air or bridging. It's just using circular patterns to kind of build an outside edge and, and go over. Like that's the latest thing they're doing right now. And I was like, that is fucking nuts. Yeah. And I've seen things in the past where they've applied AI 
to 3D printed designs to make like more durable parts or yeah, more structural yeah, so, and, and integral parts. Yeah, because in Fusion, you can actually take your model and then say, hey, I'm going to 3D print with it. It's going to be a 3D printed part and then make it more aesthetically pleasing. And it will generate like 20 different designs that you can choose. And I was like, what? <laughs> this is cool. And that's only come up in the last like two years or so. Yeah. And that's the other crazy thing too. Like when like the AI can run all the math and the physics that would design yeah. a part that maybe a human wouldn't, that would be more structurally integral to, yeah. to what you're trying to build. AI is insane. Like right now, I, it's hard to even keep up with what it's all doing. Like have, you, have you fallen down the AI, AI rabbit hole? I tried that chat GBT and I was like, this is cool, but I don't really have any use for it. <laughs> no, nah, neither do I. I tried it once with uh, literally the only prompt I wrote was the plural Bitcoin. And <laughs> <laughs> that was it. But no, and yeah, we, we, but we've, uh, I've been applying it to the newsletter. I've been using Mid Journey to create thumbnails for, for yeah. the event every day. See, that's cool. Like the graphics portion of that is insane. Yeah. Like it's come so far from like even two months ago when I was first producing images. <laughs> it's, oh, I've, it's noticed, mind I've noticed in the last week the it's made significant advances, particularly with hands. For some reason or another, like it couldn't do produce, hands. Produce a human hand. It would have like nine fingers, or it would just look <laughs> like it was crunched up. But in the last two weeks, particularly, I've noticed I've been creating thumbnails. I'm like, oh, the hands actually look look like human Decent. hands now. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I, see, even with like pictures, they're starting. There's a program that just came out. I think like three or four weeks ago that does 3D modeling. Now, the models look like crap, but it's just started. And I was like, "Holy shit! Can you imagine just prompting in some words and it just designs a 3D model for you that you can print?" Like that's what I'm excited for, to be honest. Yeah. How do you think this affects <laughs> the workforce and how we actually? produce things like what do you what effect i think it's going to change it completely where now people aren't designing it themselves they're just getting really good at writing in prompts yeah prompties that's the uh, prompties that's it's a term there's, I've no, become there's nothing aware you can of. do about it no <laughs> like it's here like you're not going to get rid of it now so people better just understand like hey you might as well get really good at prompting if this could possibly take your job like that's yeah. what sucks like as a designer i design parts I might as well start getting good at prompting for this new 3D program because then I can design really cool shit. Yeah, I'm a bad prompty. I, uh, I'm not good. It's, <laughs> that's well, that's one of the crazy things too. He's gonna begin combining these these different AI systems and go to Chat B, uh, Chat or whatever the GBT three <laughs> or four, whatever it is, and be like, hey. I'm trying to produce a picture. Can you write a prompt for me? Because I'm too dumb to do it. And they'll write a prompt, and then you just copy and paste that into the other AI. Does it actually do that? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's insane. You don't even have to write good prompts now. You just have the AI write the prompt for you. Yeah. Are we going? Yeah. It just we... makes me worry, because we always like see the sci-fi videos where AI and stuff, and you're like, is this the beginning of it all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is like, it feels like the... The beginning of the movie, her or the Terminator. Like, are we? Yes. Maybe all together. Are we just starting it's, the ball rolling on Skynet? It's fun, but it's also pretty scary. Cause I just saw like a picture the other day that was was putting VR headsets on old folks, and they're like putting them into the virtual reality worlds. And I'm like, this is almost like pod living, and it's scary as fuck. Yeah, I mean that's when you think about how this affects so you. Obviously you don't want to be a Luddite. You want to recognize like, Hey, this is here. Probably yeah. not putting the cat back in the bag, the genie back in the bottle. How do we no. implement this into our lives without turning it into a tool to thrust everybody into the pod life? And I mean, so that's, <laughs> that's I guess, scary part. I guess that's two directions we have is like pod life or we find a way to make it so we're leveraging this technology to just make our lives easier so that we can go do more worthwhile things in meat space and not get thrust yeah. into the, to the pod. Yeah. That's, that's the scary part, especially how the world's going right now. Yes. Yeah. They're going to push towards pod life. <laughs> we need right. people to stand up and not do that. Like real life is way better than pod life. Sure. Yeah. 
No, and that's what I mean. I've been trying to stay on top of the AI stuff, particularly in the last six months since it's blown up and been talking to somebody who's been following it for years, a friend of mine um, who's really on top of it. And yeah, basically the way he frames it is we've, we've got two paths forward. You have like the open AIs of the world, which is a bit close, closed source AI. And then you have these open source AI projects and he's very adamant. Like we really need the open source projects to win out. Cause if not, you'll have this We're screwed. Techno- <laughs> you'll have like the technocratic future that everybody's afraid of. I mean, that makes total sense. Yeah. We don't want, we don't want closed source cause you can't verify anything. And no, these companies I'm, are going to run it all. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, you're going to like chat GBT3 and it's all woke. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll, get, we'll feed you answers that are, you can tell, have been, uh, just been fed. Tra- data trained from, in there. Yeah. yeah fed from the, the woke capitalist of the world. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy times. It really is. I, it's interesting. It's scary. And it's also awesome. It's like, a combination of all three. Yeah. And so how do you how do you see this evolving with crypto cloaks? Like what what's next? Obviously you guys have node enclosures, you have the the space heater, you have the fan um the fan stuff to yep. go into the ducks, you have the the wallet stuff. Like what else do you see yourself building for Bitcoiners? God, I don't know. As as it as time goes on, I guess we'll find something. It's it usually co- ideas come from the community mostly, or something that I'm doing around the house. I'm like, well, I might as well just do something with Bitcoin on this because that's what I want. And then I just say, oh, maybe other people want it. Um, the big thing we're doing right now is just trying to work with bigger mining farms and trying to help them out in the mining industry with shrouds and stuff. Um, other than that, I don't have anything right now on the docket besides the space heater. Just because I put so much time into it, I haven't even had time to think about anything else. Yeah. I mean, the wallet stuff alone, like being able to get those things that allow you to, to hide your wallet yeah. in obscure places around your house, that's a, that's a big product in and of itself. Yeah, I love the tomb. It says, like, caution, do not ingest insect poison. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. Yeah, stay away. Don't touch it. Yeah. And then you guys also allow people who have ideas, maybe don't have a 3D printer or design skills, come work with you to build yeah. stuff. I think that's the best part is if they, if they don't want to design it, but they have an idea, we'll absolutely work with them and bring it to life. Like, that's the whole point. What's that workflow like? Uh, they give us an idea. We'll take it. And then we just start busting out the designs. Uh, right now we're kind of making one... Uh, for a guy that wants to put a, a miner in a tub and that it's kind of like the space heater, but they're using uh, storage containers, tubs. And then what they want is just a divider to keep the cold and hot side separate, kind of um, like how the hash huts have that foam piece. But the, here we're going to actually design a 3D printed part that can slip in on it to help them out. So it's more just getting dimensions from them or the general idea. I'll take it, we'll model it up and then show it to them. And then we go from there and kind of just go through the process of okay, what needs to be changed, what needs to be upgraded. And then we'll print a prototype, see how that is, how it fits, make final changes, and then do the final product. That's a massive product. As somebody who has been entrenched, 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 entrenched. Entren- That's entrenched. Some entrenched. More, Monday morning rip freaks entrenched in the <laughs> off-grid mining space, particularly in shipping containers, that yeah. creating that, that hot and cold aisle. Yeah, a lot of it is getting these foam guns, and it's very <laughs> sealing everything off. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very labor intensive. Uh, it's not cut and dry. It's not clean. It's a bit rough around the edges. So yep. if you're able to three D print these parts just to create the perfect separator between the hot and cold aisle, that would be massive. And yeah, like the it. big the big thing was even for like these huge mining farms, not even storage containers, but maybe on storage containers too. Where that gap is between the S19s, it's that L shape where the power supply doesn't quite sit up right against it. You have all that negative back pressure coming back in. We just, we made a little, we call it the, a thong, and it's literally just a little 3D printed part that pretty much closes that gap and stops all that back pressure from coming in. So like, even simple things like that are huge. Yeah. And we've seen improvements on that. And it's just a clip on, right? Yeah, it just pushes right in there. And it has a little handle if you ever want to pull it out. 
but yeah, you just push it in there. And how much is that? I don't even I don't even know what I have on the website to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but it's probably cheaper than buying that foam or Oh yeah, absolutely. Spending hours of labor trying to seal up each little enclosure yeah. if you're running S19s in in your container or whatever it may be. Yep. Yeah. For sure. It's fascinating. Yeah, I love it all, man. Like th- having 3D printers and being able to design stuff so quickly in the Bitcoin mining space. I, I love it. That's why I've been really pushing like home mining products or even just my Bitcoin mining products in general lately. I've been hooked on that for a long time. I got away from like enclosures as much and now I'm just all about how can I improve Bitcoin mining and all that stuff? It's fun. Well, it's important work because I mean, micro BT and Bitmain from model to model, like it's not each model is different. Yeah. Like, like massively different. Um, even in, within the same models, just due to the nature of the supply chains over the last couple of years, even you can find the same model with different parts. Yeah, and the cool part is if you want to run like a bigger mining operation or you are hosting people's miners, the one thing we're doing is standardizing the whole cutout because you have all the foam boards and you're trying to seal each different miner. And if, say, you swap out an S19 for a What's Miner M30, well, that's a different hole. Well, now you have to like cut in a patch in a new whole foam piece. Well, the shrouds that we do, we have everything that lines up to an eight inch hole. So you just put our shroud on, you can slap that in there and then it's ready to go. It's already sealed because you have the same eight inch hole. Everything's good to go. You don't have to cut a patch, repatch it, cut a new hole for the different miner to work. And I think that's really cool in itself because you kind of ease the whole process of hosting or swapping out miners and stuff like that. Yeah. So you've got a picks and shovels business, which is <laughs> one of those things that people talk about. Like, yeah, the, uh, like just just be there for the the people who are in the gold rush and provide them with the the tools that they need the to tools to be better at, at getting. Yeah, I love it. I get a design and I make cool shit, so it's a win win for me. How big's your team? Uh, so we have nine people now, and we have a full store now running out of the UK. Running out. Of- like a physical store? Uh, not a physical, but we have an online store. Uh, Black mm. Coffee actually runs that. It's Crypto Cloaks UK. And he runs everything that we pretty much print in the US. He now does out of uh, UK to save people on shipping. Mm-hmm. And do you plan, so on, sweet. you plan on expanding this to many different parts of the world? or is that just Yeah, I would eventually love to do like have one in all the major countries. I think that'd be cool shit. Because yeah. eventually it would be nice to have a have a business in every country if you think about it because with 3d printing you can save on shipping you can do oh i'll send you the file you print it there and now it's distributed to that country for cheap shipping compared to like all the international and flying overseas and stuff like that yeah what uh what about building this business have you learned over the years oh god (laughs) i mean you're always learning it's pretty nuts uh the big thing was like underpricing yourself because Everybody thinks it's plastic, it needs to be cheap, but it's really, it's not. You're not really pricing your products out of the plastic it uses. It's more the design and the print time and your own personal time to make it worth it. Uh, le- There's a lot of lessons that you learn as you go. It's it's crazy. And it's fun. Like, I love being an entrepreneur. I'm really glad I got to quit killing turkeys every day. <laughs> that was your job? My, yeah, so I worked as an industrial engineer at Genio Turkey. Mm. And then a year and a half ago, I quit. And ran this full time because I built it up on the side. Hell yeah! What so. a, what advice do you have for anybody who is a fiat wage slave, a wage cuck, looking to get out yeah. and like apply? Uh, I would say find your passion, find your passion in Bitcoin, and then slowly build it up on the side. You don't have to take the crazy jump. I when people are like, "Oh, just quit it and just go do it," it's like, no, don't do that. Make sure you have. You do it safely where you're not going to get completely screwed over in case Bitcoin tanks. And now you're like, well, I'm broke and I have no money. Always have build it up on the fiat life for a little bit. Find your passion, build that business on the side. And when it's finally a good time, swap over. That's what I did. I I ran that for five years on the side. And then I finally hit the point where I was like, okay, I can do this full time. Let's do it. What, What was that point where you're like, all right, what what about the business gave you the confidence to to jump ship? 
Yeah, it was more just income coming in where I could actually get a decent salary. It's nowhere near what industrial engineering was doing, but it was good enough to where I could put all my time and effort into the business to keep growing instead of just kind of sitting idle. Because at one point I hit, I was doing like 20 hour days where I was doing the engineering job from like five or seven to five. I'd come home and I'd be in the shop busting out orders and all this other stuff until maybe midnight, one o'clock and then wake up again and do it all over. And the wife wasn't happy. And at that point I was like, okay, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. So we kind of sat down and I was like, here's my goal. I think it's time to finally quit. Like that's what I'm going to do. So it was more, you just ran out of hours in the day and you kind of had to make a decision. Do you want to slow down what you're building your dream or do you want to just take the jump finally? That's what I did. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned a goal, like when did you set that and how long did it take you to reach it? Uh, so it was probably five years to, to reach it. Everybody thinks, oh, I'm going to start a business. It's really easy. And then I can quit. No, it's not. <laughs> like, it even took longer than what I thought. I thought I was going to be ready to go in like two, three years, but it's not because you, especially in the Bitcoin space, if a bear market hits, everything slows down. It's just, it's just what it happens. Um, and then as the bull comes back, then you're like, oh shit. Okay, here we go again. But then you don't want to overdo it because you know, there's another bear market coming. So it was more just trying to find the happy medium between the bulls and the bears, figure out how much income you have coming in and then seeing if it's the right time for you and all your expenses and stuff. Yeah. And then as a Bitcoiner, do you have like a Bitcoin treasury goal? Like how do you manage revenue? Cause you guys accept Bitcoin too. How do you? Yeah. So the big thing for me is I never sell any Bitcoin that we get through the business. I will take on debt, fiat debt, before I ever sell coin to try to pay that off. And I have been successful so far. So what, uh, what's lucky. the, what's the breakdown revenue split in terms of fiat versus Bitcoin? I would say before this year, 2022, it was probably 70% fiat, 30% Bitcoin, but now it's at least 50, 50. Damn. I'm actually surprised. And that's where like 2022 was rough because I was like, okay, I don't have enough fiat coming in now to cover all the costs where I don't want to sell Bitcoin. But I survived because everybody's now paying in Bitcoin, which is awesome. That's what I want. But I also don't want to sell it. But now if more of your orders are going in Bitcoin, you're like, shit, I might have to finally sell some to make up for the fiat that we're not getting on the other end. Yeah. You could sell some more, convince the people in your supply chain to begin accepting Bitcoin. <laughs> Exactly. No, I've tried. There's there's places where like if I get filament, I need to order. I'm like, hey, you guys should accept Bitcoin. And they're like, what's that? And then I'm like, oh, boy, I'll keep keep trying. (laughs) So to further educate the freaks out there and maybe want to start a Bitcoin business, what does your stack look like in terms of accepting Bitcoin? What are you using BTC pay server using open node or something else? I would say for me, I started out with um, God, what were they? Was it open node? No, it was, I don't even remember what that company was called for like six months. They ran it for me and accepted all the Bitcoin. And I said, what the hell am I doing? There's BTC pay server. So I swapped to that and now I run it myself. So I do, uh, the back end of my website is WordPress that runs a BTC pay server on there to accept Bitcoin. And I think that's one of the easiest ways that I've found. I mean, there's other ways where people can run the software for you, but I wanted it myself. I want to run my own payment processing. So, yeah, I mean, that's what we do here too. And it is possible. It just takes a bit of a sunk cost on the front end to actually build out the logic of yeah. pricing things and accepting things. But that's, that's something I, I wanted to do. I want to give a presentation here at the Bitcoin commons, like running a company on a Bitcoin standard, particularly using BTC pay server. Awesome. That's one thing that I've realized over the years, we've been running ours for like over four years now, almost five years come April or May. Uh, awesome. Is these, there's still like the, like the business process types of things, particularly like treasury management and UTXO consolidation, uh, revenues on the lightning network versus on chain. Yep. Um, like I, I've told this story before on the podcast, but I had a, like a, lump in my throat moment a few years ago where I uploaded an XPUB on a BTC pay server via hardware wallet. And then I like I, I could see on my BTC pay server, all this Bitcoin was coming and then I plugged my hardware wallet in to um, 
to a software and the Bitcoin wasn't there. And I had no idea and what you're like, gap forward what the was. Fuck? Yeah. So I had to learn about like gap limits and extending those so they could actually, the software. Yeah. Gap, limit, gap limits. Nobody talks about that. And it's actually scary as shit when you finally hit it. <laughs> yeah. Especially with BTC pay server. I, I did the same thing. I was like, uh, where are, where's all the sats? Like, what the fuck? They're not here. And you had to like slowly read on like gap limits and you're like, Oh, thank God they're yeah. there. It just technically can't see it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's something we, I think people like you, people like me and others running BTC pay server for their businesses, we should get our heads together. Cause there's, and like get all these PRs and BTC pay server. Cause they're like, especially for us, we're, we're accepting $1 donations, $50 shout outs. Yeah. People will send us a couple hundred dollars randomly. And so you have all these different, UTXOs in BTC pay server, I would love a program that would basically look at your UTXOs and say, Hey, the fee market's pretty low right now. Yeah, I'd be, I'd love to set a threshold, like every 10 million sats, let me know when I have a group of UTXOs that, would be nice. that I can consolidate into one UTXO. Um, simple things like that. that no, that'd be really nice. Cause I just did that. And I had like 141 I was consolidating. Well, thank God it was one sat a bite. I saw it drop. And I was like, yeah, okay, I got to do it now because 141. <laughs> so yeah, but it's like these small things that you don't think about until you start running it. And you're running it. You're like, oh, shit, I have all these UTXOs. Yep. Some of this is definitely going to be dust if the fee market picks up. Like, what what the hell do I do? Yeah, that's the thing is I always forget about that sometimes. And that's why I hit 141. I was like, oh, shit, I got to be careful where you have all these UTXOs and they're all just in different areas. Yeah. That's going to be a problem moving forward. Yeah, I would like that. And then on the lightning side, I would like like a plug-in that, because we, we, we don't send, obviously, a lot from our, our lightning node. We're receiving yeah. mostly, and then wax out the channels. So I would love like a plug-in that's like, hey, you should rebalance this. Maybe you should sweep some of these incoming funds on chain. Like there's so many, yeah. there's so many improvements uh, in terms of like the the tools that business owners could have at their fingertips to, to actually run a big a company on a Bitcoin standard. Yeah. Do you run Thunderhub on your BTC pay server to look at the back end of your lightning? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, what was the one before that? Thunderhub is amazing. I, uh, BTC pins actually showed me that one and I was like, yes, this is much better than what I was using before. Shout out to BTC pins. I confused you too on rabbit hole recap. <laughs> he, he said something about that. I was like, that's hilarious. Take it, man. Take it <laughs> you guys have very similar aesthetics in, in terms of the, uh, you know, the black and white, like logo. And it's my mind. Cause I remember seeing your tweet yeah. and I was like, this is uh, of the space heater. And I was just trying to recall it from memory. And for some reason, the BTC pins. Yeah, he, it was funny me. when he said that. I was like, Hey, at least we got shouted out. Kind of. That's cool. <laughs> We corrected it. We corrected it. We yeah. found it. There we but, go. Uh, yeah, there's... What else? What, as a, somebody running a company on a Bitcoin standard, what else would you like to see in terms of tools? And... <sighs> yeah. I mean, BTC Pay Server is awesome. I don't really have any... I don't really have any concerns with that. Your ideas are great. I like the whole UTXO thing because that would be handy to get reminders because I forget. On the business side, I think point of sale terminals would be cool. I know there's... A couple that are out there i don't know if is btc pay integrated on one yet because i think that would be nuts i know you could do like the web browser i think you stuff. can yeah yeah it's similar to what what ibex is doing too they just okay. do the web browser pos system it's hard to know everything that's happening in the space because it does move so fast yeah like no matter how hard you try to keep up with it you can't yeah yeah it's um but it's fun though feels like oh i love it blazing trails <laughs> that's like yeah that's one thing i would like to get out i mean going back to like btc pay server is i'd like to get out, i don't know if it's a course or just another podcast where we talk about like running a company on a bitcoin standard using btc pay server because there are i mean it, it is easy uh they do make it very it's easy. really not that hard no it's really not that hard and it's awesome because you're your own payment processor you don't have to give one to two percent away to somebody else running your back end for Bitcoin. Like, there's no point, to be honest. No, no like, for know. podcasting 2.0, because we're, <laughs> we're receiving, like, people are streaming us sats literally every minute of every day. And yeah, see, that's so cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool technology. That's another thing, too. 
Fountain, one of these podcasting 2.0 apps, or just podcasting 2.0, the project in general, I'd love per episode splits. I'd really like to get to a point where we record an episode and once we publish it, I can get your Lightning Network public address and put you into the splits and really that'd be it. cool as shit, right? That'd be nuts. Yeah, there's, there's so, so much many, that can happen. It's so early, it's so early. I know. I, I know. Outside of the mining, the three D printing, BTC pay server, what else are are you excited about in the space? God, I don't know. I just don't want the government to take control or do anything. <laughs> I just hate the government even touching anything with Bitcoin or doing like regulations. People trying to push like Bitcoin being regulated pisses me off. Same. They're like, oh, we need it to, we need, we need regulation to go to a million. I was like, I don't give a fuck about going to a million. Personally, I got, I don't care. I want, I want the freedom money. I don't want regulations. No. So I'm not. It's not more excited. It's more worried about that aspect than anything. I just, as you, as you become more and more a Bitcoiner and go down the journey, you're just like, I don't want the government to go in anything. Like I, it worries me the most. Well, what's your path to success to defend against these government attacks? I don't even know, man. Just try to stay out of it as much as possible I, or speak up and call it out when it happens. I, it's a tough one. Like, what can we do yeah. besides? That's the tough thing is like, what can we do? I don't, I don't really know. I'm not crazily involved with it all, but I don't. It, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Near, I mean, I obviously I think about it a lot running this show and talking about this show week in and week out, but I really do think we just need to win the narrative battle. And maybe I'm naive, but I do think we're hitting a point globally. There's still a lot of sheep out there, but there are more and more people waking up being like, hey, you guys are just fucking everything up. And like, how, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to think. Like, how do we lean into, like, the governments are obviously incompetent, potentially nefarious. And you should I wouldn't not say be... potentially. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's being too nice. Yes. Uh, you have to put it in there, though. Occam's razor, which I think is a psyop of a term, uh, I think. <laughs> but that's a, uh, how do, because like, I think, and again, maybe I'm naive, but there has to be a crisis of confidence in governments. I mean, obviously, approval ratings are at all time lows. They're spending so much money, they're printing so much money. COVID vaccine mandates, are proving to be unwise lockdowns. But then you have that subset of the population that for whatever reason still They're believes. so brainwashed. It's <laughs> I don't, how do you, you can't. But, so the problem is we say, oh, we got on brainwash. You can't. They're so far gone that no matter what, even if they say you have people posting, oh, I'm, I'm still glad I took it even if it kills me. You're like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, what? <laughs> That's how far away we are. And I don't think it's going to get any better for a while. I think more and more people are waking up. Don't get me wrong on that. I think we need that a lot more to get anywhere. But there's so many sheep. Yeah. It's. And when you're a Bitcoiner, you can see it and it sucks. Yeah, it's, demor like, Holy shit. it's demoralizing to a point. It is. But you have to stay positive because like the only hope for me in the future is Bitcoin. Like if we didn't have Bitcoin, I'd be pretty depressed of the whole future of the world, to be honest. Were you always this way or? No, no, I was naive, man. I didn't care about any of this shit. But then when you get in Bitcoin, you go down that rabbit hole and now you're like, I hate it all. We need to change everything. The government is corrupt as fuck and stuff like that. Yeah. Speaking of narratives, I think we just really need to lean into the creativity that, that Bitcoin provides to the world. Like what you're building is extremely yeah. creative. Like it, it get excitement around in terms of like what you can build. Like just talking about the BTC base service stuff. Like we're building this new financial system, this new monetary that. network. We need all these tools and it's somewhat, it's not a completely blank slate, but it's still uh, rather blank and there's so much to build. There's so much to do. And it's like reinventing the wheel, but in the Bitcoin space. And I think that's pretty important because if you can do all the cool stuff with Bitcoiners or Bitcoin itself, I think normies will look into it a little bit more. Yeah. And just, yeah, and everybody talks about, like, oh, we need more developers. We need more designers. <clears throat> On the designing side of things, too, I really try to beat that drum, which is like, hey, we need a lot of designers. There are a lot of UI, UX 
flows yes. that need to be built, particularly on Bitcoin. It's unlike anything we've ever interacted with. Like if you want to leave your mark on the design world, like you have this this wide open field to come play in um, and leave your mark. Yeah, I agree. UI and UX of Bitcoin is not the greatest. No, you learn to deal with it and get it as you go down the rabbit hole. But for like a regular person, luckily it's getting better over the six years that I've been in it now. It's not great. I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but it's definitely better than where it was. No, and that should be. I mean, that's a silver lining too. Despite the fact that it's not great, we're still <laughs> passionate about it and finding ways to to implement it into our businesses and to our lives and. I think that's a testament to the power of Bitcoin is we're working with this somewhat rudimentary <laughs> UI UX across all these different softwares. Um, but it's worth it to go through all the struggle because, because Bitcoin's that powerful. Yeah, I agree. The struggle is worth it because you get the freedom. Yeah. So uh, I'm happy. We, uh, I'm happy we did this. I'm happy you're, you're building happy. You reached Thanks, out. Happy. We, uh, we pumped the uh, the space heater on rabbit hole recap the other week because I think what you're building is extremely cool and when you think about the possibilities of the future and as, particularly as it pertains to 3D printing I don't I don't think you've even tapped anywhere no. near its full potential not even close there's so much you can do it's crazy and I think mining for heat is like the start of where builders can really start changing stuff even more in the normie space I say yeah. Yeah, maybe that's how we just get Bitcoin mining. Because uh, really, everybody cares about their 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 wallets at the end of the day. If you really yeah, drop that's the thing. Of like, hey, we'll give you. Don't even call it an ASIC. Don't even say you're mining. Just say, hey, we're gonna give you this space heater. It's gonna either make you money or make you spend less money on heat every every month. Yeah, that's where you got. It, it all comes down to money for normies. So you got to kind of try to speak in their terms. Yeah, they're so not what, gonna understand the tech right away. Yeah, we're just selling space heaters. It's just a space heater that needs an internet connection. You'll be all right. It's just a smart space heater. Yeah. But it's not like it's not like a Roomba. It's not going to map out your house and, yeah. and send it back to the FBI. <laughs> it just sends hashes to a mining pool and you get Bitcoin. Yeah. Speaking of that, do you see the drone one now that Ring has? They're coming out with an inside your house drone that flies around and patrols your house what? when you're gone. No. It, I just saw it at CES. They're like... They just debuted it. It's a little flying drone that flies around your house when you're gone to patrol it. I was like, I don't fucking like that. Just scoping out everything in your house. And they're like, oh, what's this now? Sent to the FBI, CIA. Now they can bust down your doors. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, these guys were smoking pot. I mean, how many times we hadn't, I mean, it's Amazon's already given all this information to the police department. I know. God. And like, yeah, are you really, that's the thing too. Like they're going to sell this to the middle class probably doesn't need to be worried about break-ins no as much like why why are you going to add a drone <laughs> flying around your house like what is <laughs> what is the likelihood of that your house is going to get broken into i just saw like this is worse than a Roomba driving around and mapping your floor for everybody to have <laughs> i was like now they have videos of everything they know every little nook and cranny of your house i was like this is the worst yeah yeah the room is the first thing they get the floor plan and then they get the drone so they can light our now they have it all out. yeah now they have a 3d model of your house that they know every little nook and cranny and yeah it's nuts yes it's particularly if you're a bitcoin you don't ever put this shit in your house especially no. the drone <laughs> yeah don't do that. if you're securing any intimate information about your your stack in the house is not you're like you're idea. like hiding your seed phrase and this drone's flying around it sees where you tuck it and all of a sudden they, they know where it is like that's not, not, not ideal no. so what's what's next for crypto cloaks keep building man uh i don't know i love the mining mining space so we're going to keep pushing that pretty hard we're going to work with the bigger bigger mining firms and their giant warehouses and try to either standardize or make them more efficient with heat and stop downtime because i think in the big mining industries downtime of their miners is the biggest problem they're running into so we're going to try to tackle that we got a couple things in the works um i haven't really even thought about any more cases or anything it's more just focused on the s9 like space heater and the mining space. Yeah, will you expand that to other models eventually? Yeah, absolutely. I know people are already reaching out. They want what's miners and stuff. So once I get the S9 one dialed in, I'll start swapping out to other miners. And I know somebody just came out or designed a board. God, I can't remember their Twitter handle. But it's a it's a board to trick 
so you can run one S19 board. Okay. And hash with that and and spoof your fans so you don't have to run all three. So it's way more efficient. I think that's pretty nuts. So designing cases for stuff like that would be insane. That's pretty sweet. And you're just go ahead. You're good. I was going to say if any of the freaks listening right now um, are enthralled and passionate, is there any way they could help crypto cloaks out? Yeah. I mean, we'll take any data on mining that you got. Cause I think it's really important. Uh, that's why we did that whole write up where we tested all the different fans showed tear our Terra hashes, uh, the heat, the fan speeds, just so people understand what they want to do or get a better idea of where to start as a baseline. So if you guys have any ideas on different miners you want to run or data points on home mining setups that you guys have, I'd love to get the data from you and add it to a spreadsheet. I think it's really important to have a one-stop spreadsheet where you can look at a miner, look at all the different test setups that people have ran and kind of choose which one you want to go to. Yeah. Help out freaks. And where can they learn more about crypto cloaks, your designs? Yeah, uh, go to CryptoCloaks.com. Uh, if you're in Europe, you can go to CryptoCloaks.co.uk. Uh, find us on Telegram. We have a 3D printing uh, group there where we help normies and regular people that want to get into 3D printing or have any questions and learn about it. You can throw us questions and help solve problems on if you have bad prints. Join us there. But yeah, hit us on Twitter. That's our main spot. Uh, then you can find everything from there. Hell yeah. Well, Rick, it's been a fascinating conversation. I'm excited about yeah, man. what you're building, the potential for 3D printing to enhance uh, Bitcoin in the future, particularly mining. I mean, I think it's massive. I love that you're working with bigger mining farms. And I think once we tap into the HVAC industry, the, yes. the future prospects of hash rate distribution are going to be very positive. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised nobody has done one yet where you have miners running into HVAC or a smaller company has done it. I haven't seen one. Yeah, you figured that there'd be an orange built freak at one of these HVAC companies is should be pounding, yeah. pounding the tables like we need to be building this. We need to do this. This is the future. Yeah. It'll probably come. I mean, the space moves so fast. I think it's coming. Yeah, I hope so. I also, yeah, I, I, th I, th I really appreciate a lot of the uh, larger mining companies that are spinning up these multi hundred megawatt facilities, but I, I would like to see uh, smaller, smaller, more gr granular uh, yeah. hash rate distribution. I completely agree. We need more of it. Everything has its place. That's one thing. Have you ever run the numbers on like what it would like what it would take for ad home miners to begin competing with these big box miners in terms of God. Like how many individuals around the country would you need running machines in their house to sort of curb the, the centralization of yeah. the big box miners? Well if they run thirty percent, I'm trying to even do the numbers. I can't do it off the top of my head right now. It's still early. Yeah. But if you can get like what I would like to know what percentage of homes would need to run it, that'd be a cool stat like statistic to have. I think you need like a few million because you think of an ASIC at least an ASIC in each home. I'm trying to think of how many ASICs they have. Cause you can think of a uh, marathon. Like a bigger one is like 40,000, right? Yeah. Mar I'm, I'm sure marathon riot and core core has hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Yeah. I believe they have like 255,000 ASICs that they're so prop mining with. So get like a couple million home miners and you might have a better distri distribution. And then you do it globally too. Absolutely. A lot of the shit that's happening in like Africa and stuff like that, where they're literally like mining in the middle of nowhere off like water power. That's <laughs> fucking insane. We yeah. need more of that. Yeah. Shout out to Africa, Kenya with Gridless. I believe it's Kenya. Pretty sure it is. Um, Paraguay. Yeah. Gridless. That's them. Yeah. Paraguay's plugging in a lot of miners now. Argentina as well. I mean, somebody lives in Texas and uh, lives in the United States. It's great that there's a, a burgeoning mining industry here, but it is getting uh, quite a bit of the apple right now. And I would, it does as a Bitcoiner who, uh, it, who is uh, looking at it from a Bitcoiner perspective, not an American or a Texan perspective. We do need to watch this trend and be like, all right, maybe, maybe we should move some hash rate elsewhere. You have too many. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need more in other places. Yes. Yeah. I well, agree. Keep printing. Yeah, Thanks, I, th- man. I think what you're doing is going to help make that happen. So thank you for doing what you do. I'm trying. <laughs> Thanks. What, uh, any final thoughts for the freaks? Uh, every Bitcoiner should own a 3D printer. So start your journey. Do it. I got to get on it. on another level. I got to get on it. I'm not on it yet. But now. Someday. Now there's a fire Someday. under my ass. So there you go. And I, I can I reach out to. to you and get some advice. Yes. So I'll be, I'll be annoying you about that. Perfect. <laughs> Rick, this was a pleasure. Appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for, uh, coming on a podcast at 8 a.m. on a Monday. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. The coffee helps. Coffee does help. <laughs> coffee is uh, is inciting some some movement in the bowels, so I'm going to go. <laughs> Sounds good, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to go take a shit, so we're, we're done here. See you later. <sighs> I don't want, no, I, I can hold the shit. I just think uh, <laughs> we've covered a good good amount here. I want to save some for the future, too, because I think we should we should probably do like a 3D printing and Bitcoin update um, pretty regularly. Yes. Because it seems like things I'm down are moving, for that, man. moving pretty quickly. Both of them move quick, so anytime. Yeah. Hell I'll yeah. reach out to you if you don't reach out in time. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be better about reaching out. It's all good, man. Go uh, go enjoy your day. Go build day some shit. And, uh, Will do. I'll see you on the internet. Yeah, I'll see you on the internet, man. Peace and love, freaks. Later, freaks. <laughs>